believe I did this. So I can't believe I did this. Uh, we were, were on Facebook Live today with Mary Davis, and of course, we're talking about everyday spirit. And I was so excited about having her on the show that I forgot to hit the record button. And so I want to encourage you, my viewers today on YouTube, to go to Facebook Live. I don't know if I'll be able to extrapolate Facebook Live and put it on YouTube. I don't know if I can do this, but Mary, I would love for you to share a little bit about everyday spirit and why they should go to Facebook Live and watch our, our video today. Well, we had such a wonderful talk, and I yes. hope that you do. Everyday Spirit is a day book, so there's a page for every day of the year. And yes. on each page, you have a thought, um, a, a prayer, an affirmation, um, a wisdom for that day, and also a suggestion on how to practice it during the day. It's hopeful and positive. It offers courage and strength, and it adds more joy and more peace and more meaning to our lives as we go through the year focusing on the light and the goodness and the peace and the grace. Yes, absolutely. And, and for those of you who missed this conversation, very powerful, especially if you're dealing with loss during the holidays. Um, I wrote an article called Embracing Loss During the Holidays about several years ago. And, um, and as I read your book, Mary, I realize that this is a great place to kind of um, embrace um, that loss, losses in our life. Share a little bit more about your background and why you feel or why you felt so important to share your losses in the book so that others can learn from your journey. Mm -hmm. I personally my, had a, a, an infant loss. My second daughter was stillborn at full term. And I learned a lot about the nature of grief, the landmines of grief. And, and how it affects us and how it grows within us. And it's important to acknowledge it. And especially at the holidays, it's important to do it in a way that you are most comfortable acknowledging your loss, however you want to do that, to plan ahead and to do what's most comfortable with you. There are a lot of pages in the book about grief and loss and how we might um, use some of the tools to go forward. During the holidays, there are a few essays about this very thing mm -hmm. that might be helpful. Well, you know, interesting, you went into writing this book um, broken, as you described that on the show today, that you were broken when you started this journey. And we get to go on this journey in this book called Everyday Spirit. And I'm telling you, I spend, for those of you who didn't, I, I, I feel like I, you know, it, it was meant to be. It was meant to be that I did not hit the record button for the YouTube, um, but you can go to um, Facebook Live and, and watch the entire, entire show. But as you are writing about your brokenness, you write about brokenness through the eyes of gratitude. Let's talk about gratitude real quick um, as we encourage people to learn more about this book and, and go to everydayspirit.net or your Facebook page at, um, at Everyday Spirit One. So talk about gratitude and the importance of gratitude when it comes to dealing with loss, grief, mm -hmm. or disappointment. Gratitude is one of the most important spiritual practices. It has an almost magical ability to transform us from complaint and lack to a sense of abundance and fullness and joy. It, and it's, it's also like a window to the soul. When we, when we express gratitude, when we notice beauty, when we are in awe of what is around us and the precious nature of life, it is a stunning transformation within us. And suddenly we are in a completely new place. So if there's one tool that you would add to your life, it would be a gratitude practice, a simple one where you wake up and say, thank you for this day, or at the end of the day, listing three things you're grateful for. It will change your life. Do you know that um, a gratitude journal I started it in like 2000, it was maybe 1999 in preparation for the millennium. millennium. And um, 
And I remember that was the first journal I ever started, Mm. but I have been journaling my whole life since I was a little girl, like five. Mm. I would write love letters to God and I would fold them and put them in my my nightstand. And any time that I needed to pour myself out of like the grief that maybe I was feeling as a young adult or going through life. And then I would, I would fold it as a little girl and I would put it in my nightstand. And then, but I, from time to time would pick up journals and I would write and I would hear the wisdom within us. We talked about the silence and I wanted to say this earlier, but I guess the YouTube video people are going to get this, not anybody else, that I once learned that it's in the silence that we hear God speak. I would also like to add that I believe our intuition comes from God when it's intended, when it's intended in peace and love and all of that, because, you know, sometimes the voices in our head is not intuition. It's that moment where you get that, ah, that, that silence is when you hear that voice of God, the voice of intuition, the voice of knowledge. And um, so as as you're writing this and dealing with all the grief that you're going through, we talk about this gratitude. We talk about, um, but what I wanted to say is one of the things that we did not talk about, we maybe touched upon it and sending love to people who have hurt us. Let's talk about forgiveness real quick before we end the, this little brief intro to the Facebook live video. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think most of us have had a chance to look at forgiveness from various angles. Some of us choose not to do it, and some of us do. I think of forgiveness as the greatest gift we can give to ourselves because it releases the tie that binds us to the hurt. So when we allow ourselves to say, I don't condone the action, but I forgive you and I release this, we free our soul to more joy and more peace. And it is a great relief and a great gift to us. And it opens space for beautiful things to pour in. Absolutely. And so a lot of people think that the reason they don't forgive is because if you forgive, you condone. Um, And that is the furthest. And also people forgive And the expression is forgive and forget. And unless you have dementia, that's not real. You don't forgive and forget. I think you forgive and grow. That's my my take on forgiveness. But for the people that are holding on to lack of forgiveness, um, it will damage your body. It is is it is it will go into certain areas of your healing, the the chakras, the healing centers of your body, and it will manifest into disease. So um, there's just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean they need to be coming back into your life. Uh, there's a difference between trust and forgiveness. I just want to add that um, forgiveness is for you. Trust is earned. You have to, it takes a lifetime to build trust and a moment to break it. And so the person who has broken trust, it's their own. They need to, to, to work hard to earn it. It's not something that is to be given. Is that, would you like to add to any of that? I love that. And I I just want to add one more thing to what you were saying about the silence and hearing the voice and what to do next. Because I think within that space, oftentimes we understand that we do need to forgive because we feel the place where that trauma sits when we don't Mm -hmm. forgive. But in your journaling, you learned this intuitively Mm -hmm. that we do need to quiet the mind in order to hear the whisper of spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not a loud voice. Intuition is not a loud thing. It will not beat us over the head. Mm -hmm. It will if we don't listen for a very long time. But if we make it a habit to find quiet time every day, then we train ourselves to open that space to allow the universal wisdom, the spiritual messages we need, divine grace to come through us. And we will feel that everything after that flows more easily. 
Beautiful. I, I love it. And and I, I promised just a little bit of a, I don't know how much time we've been on here, but I want to encourage you to go to Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show. That's facebook.com forward slash Lillian's Radio Show. And you'll be able to watch the entire video that I forgot to record. This is the first time that's ever happened to me, Mary Davis. <laughs> and uh, But I am I am honored that we have this little private chat but Me nobody, too. just the two of us and anybody who wants to watch you. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Lily. It's oh. been such a joy. It's been a joy. For those of you uh, who would like to get the book, Everyday Spirit, you can get it at um, everydayspirit.net or you can go to Amazon and get your book or The Seventh Caller because the show will air again at noon and the show will air again at five. So um, you'll have different opportunities to win the book. So take advantage of it. Mark your calendars. And for those of you who um, would like to uh, learn more about the show, the Lillian McDermott radio show, you can go to whenyouneedafriend.com. Please become a subscriber. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. And when you do that, you'll get the, for the show, whenyouneedafriend.com, you get the the podcast and for YouTube, you get the video. So it's the on and off the air. So if you're subscribed to my YouTube video, then you will get this. But if not, you'll have to subscribe. Please share this video if you liked it. Go to Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show. And you can also find Mary Davis at Everyday Spirit One. So please like us, give us the thumbs up, share it, and help the show grow. Thank you, Mary Davis, for being you, a Lily. part of this tiny little segment because I forgot to record. Oh my goodness. It happens. It happens. No worries. <laughs> Okay. Well, and I'm going to stop the recording. So until our next conversation, we'll see you again.